I'm holding a two-handed fly fishing outfit. Sometimes you'll hear them be called spay rods or a whole bunch of different terms. We at Leland call them two-handed because, you know, two hands go on the cork. Makes it pretty simple. What's cool about a two-handed fly rod, though, is if you agree with us that a fly rod, as it relates to casting, is just an amplifier, it amplifies your ability to move the weighted fly line, and it does that by storing energy in the flex rod and then transferring that stored energy into the fly line, and off the fly line goes, then a little bit longer amplifier can be great for a type of special cast. And the cast is a roll cast, water cast, if you will. And people get confused when they pick up a two-hander. I'm gonna give you a few tips that might help you. And the first is this, that although we're on a lawn right now, just imagine this is water. Well, a two-handed fly rod is brilliant for water casts. Again, a commonly referred to as roll casts. Imagine this is water. I have contact with the water, that is great. I next have to remove the majority of slack of that fly line. And you can see I've got spaghetti piles and so on out there. Simply by lifting my rod, and pulling it back to the begin, beginning part of my casting stroke, I have, for the most part, straightened out my line. I still have water contact out there, but you'll notice one thing very important. The position I'm holding the rod in right now, you can see the lower section, the butt of my rod, is pointed outward. We have a saying around here, butt to belt. If I simply pull the butt of the rod to my belt, watch what'll happen with the fly line. Off it goes. What happened there is this. By pulling on the lower part of the rod, the upper part of the rod flexed. It stored energy. And then when the butt hit my belt, the rod tip stopped. If you've been struggling with your cast, whether single or two-handed cast, one of the biggest issues we run into is that you're not firmly stopping your rod during your stroke to transfer that energy out of the rod efficiently into the fly line. Well, guess what? If you pull the butt of the rod to your belt, you have a built-in stop in your rod all the time. And you'll notice my upper hand doesn't move. There's no power stroke to my upper hand. Let me show you that again. I remove the slack of the line. I've got contact with the water out there. My upper hand's not going to move. The butt of the rod will hit my belt and off the fly line goes. And look at the position of my upper hand now. It has not moved. It stays right in the same spot. I'll do a faster one now, boom. Upper hand doesn't move, butt to belt, and the line goes where I want it. Once you can efficiently start to move the fly line, good things can happen because you can peel off more of your running line, and with the exact same casting stroke, as long as we can get the head, the heavier portion of the line system moving where we want it, we can release the thinner line and extend our distance. So let's repeat. I'm going to position myself so that I've removed slack of my line. I still have contact with the imaginary water out there. I'm going to grab the butt of my rod, hit my belt, and I can release the extra line. Pop quiz, when do you release the extra line? Answer is just after the stop. If you think about it, the rod is flexed when I'm pulling on the butt of the rod. When it hits my belt, the rod tip stops. That's when the energy goes into the fly line. And once I've transferred the energy into the mass of the fly line, we have inertia, off the line is going. It's just after the stop where you can release the extra line and physics takes care of the rest. The thin line follows the heavier line and you've extended your cast. Secret here is you don't have to increase your power in the pull or the cast. We're just cheating with physics. Hopefully that helps you a little bit. There are some more subtleties to work on, but basically all we're doing is moving fly line. It's that simple. Get out and do some two-hand casting.